Hello, hello, hello. Hey, folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. <laughs> Bob, that's a good one. Um, can you guys hear me now? Let me know what you're hearing. Sorry about that. I don't know what the heck is going on here. I'm using the exact same setup that I've been using the last numerous streams with zero issue. Hello, hello. Hey, folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. Let me add a compressor to this. Ba -ba -ba, that should help. And a limiter. Close. Sorry about that, folks. I don't know why there was an audio issue there. Uh, I had the audio going into the computer. The stream should have been picking, or into the camera. Uh, whatever, doesn't matter. We have audio now. Sorry about that. Okay, so I might as well recount everything I said since you guys didn't hear a word of what I was saying. I'm not putting up a video this week because my computer is right here. This is not my office, so obviously I'm not working on my computer right at the moment. I need to tear this thing down and rebuild it for various reasons, so I can't edit a video without my computer. So that's why it's sitting here. I'm going to film the video about tearing it down and rebuilding it, yet... The main point of the stream is both to just have something for you folks, and rather than put up a video, I thought I might as well pop in here, talk to everybody, hang out a little bit. I'm going to unbox this. The folks over at Evolution sent over one of their 14-inch metal cutting chop saws to me, and that's what this is. So it's a chop saw, it purpose intended for cutting metal, not with an abrasive blade, but with a carbide tooth blade. I've used one of these in the past, not the specific one, this is a new model, but I've used saws from Evolution in the past, and I've been happy with them. I don't know if I'm going to be doing a full-on product review on this thing. I want to do more like project work and, and feature it while I'm doing some project work. But let me know if you'd be interested in a review or you just want to see me using it and throw some thoughts in while I build something. Like, I need to build a new welding bench for my studio space for doing project work. The display table I have is a wooden table. It's just, it's falling apart from my hammering on it. I only ever built it intending it to be where I post or where I just put products to show you folks and I worked on it and destroyed it. So I need a real bench. So I'm going to use this for that. Check chat here with you folks. Uh, King Custom Garage looking for folks to follow them. I have no idea about your content. So if folks want to follow them, that's up to you folks. So, all right. Uh, okay. I might as well go ahead and we got uh, 11 folks in here right now. Might as well go ahead and pop this box open get right into what the stream is about if you guys have any questions any any uh, normal q a stuff whatever you just want to hear how my week is going whatever feel free to ask let's get this box open actually you know what they sent over a second box and i know what it is already i've actually seen uh if anybody follows on youtube house of chop they sent him one of these saws as well and his uh he did an unboxing video and a little bit of a quick review, and I watched a bit of it. I didn't watch the full video, but uh, I know what's in the second box that they sent over. This box contains... Wow. Oh, I didn't expect that. Metal. They sent over a bunch of scrap metal. Well... I guess it's it's brand new it's not really scrap metal oh house of chop is here hi yeah you can check out he did a full video about this saw already i've just been waiting i figured i'd stream it and show you folks whatever they sent some looks like four inch tubing or some square tube in there some all thread just to show off the capabilities of a saw as what you can do with it Oof, and some plate cool it's like 30 pounds of a uh, scrap metal here but i can make some little stuff out of or just test out the saw on later. I'm not going to be testing it out in this stream. I can tell you that for a fact because I can tell you for a fact I'm not going to be testing this out because it's a this thing has a 15 amp rated motor and I'm in my apartment right now doing this live stream. My I don't want to test this hundred year old house wiring with a 15 amp chop saw motor. So sorry if you expect that. Yeah, let's get this thing open. Mm. Instructions, don't need those. 
Ah, a uh, pipe clamp. So that'll go on the shoe. That'll go on the shoe to help the pipe hold in place while you're using the saw. Styrofoam, I don't love that. But the thing does weigh 50 pounds. The whole box in packing material and everything was 60 pounds, and that's not including the scrap metal they sent. So uh, I, can, I can understand why they had to put some decent packing material in here. Mm. Yep, yep, that's 50 pounds. Sounds about right. <laughs> oh, this chair is not exactly a display thing for uh, a tool like this. Let me clear off a corner of my desk and I can set this up here for you folks. Batteries. So how is everybody Saturday going? Mine is going to be a busy day. I did cleaning in here so I can get ready for the stream. And I got to tear this computer down and film, film that content for my second channel, the Alan Mandic All One Word channel. Hey. Where's the latch? to find where the latch is that holds this thing down. Is this pin? Oh, I, I'm unboxing this and seeing it for the first time the same as you folks. So, where the heck is the pin in this? Uh, King Custom Garage asked how long I've been on YouTube. I've had a channel for 10 years now, um, but I've been actively uploading as the Hot Rod Hippie for three, coming up on three years. So, or, yeah, coming up on three years. A couple months, it'll be three years. I can't find where the heck the release is on this thing to lift it up. What am I missing? Yeah, that's it. Just stuck. There we go. All right, there's the 14 inch carbide tipped blade on this thing. It's a serious blade and they're also not cheap to replace these blades, but they are strong. They're real strong. I think with the standard carbide tip one, you can't cut stainless, but you can cut mild steel, aluminum, you know, copper, softer materials. They actually have uh, some of the measurements right here. You can cut up to five and an eighth inch round stock on this thing. So tubing or solid stock if you really take your time. If you want to do a 45 degree cut on uh, round stock, it's going to be four and an eighth inch. Doo -doo -doo. Square stock, three and a half by three and a half at a 45 degree angle. 90 degree angle, it's four and three quarter inch stock. So I could do four inch uh, rectangular tube for framework with this chop saw. First impression, the thing I can tell you, one thing I've never liked about any chop saw, uh, this one, any other brand I've used, it's got that automatic guard thing there. So as you go down, the guard actually pulls away from the blade. One thing I just never liked about pretty much any chop saw I've used is how narrow the base is. You know, this base is only, I don't think I have a tape measure handy, but this base is, looks like probably like 13 inches wide. So, you know, if I'm putting larger pieces of material on here, it could want to tip. I've seen a lot of people build like chop saw workbenches where they actually build the workbench level with the actual base of the chop saw. And that can really help out uh, with having materials be steadied by the table, not so much the saw itself. King Custom Garage, you've been on YouTube for about two and a half, two or three years as well. Cool. I like that trigger. Yeah. So, all right. Let's see. I'm going to show you folks a little closer view of this thing. Hmm. 
mean teeth. So yeah, 15 amp, 120 volt motor, 1450 RPM, uh, free speed, no load speed. It's got, one thing I like about these saws, they've got that, like, like most good chop saws, they've got that quick release, you can go ahead and quickly back off and go forward. And there's a little indicator for where you should put your fence for different thicknesses of material. You got angle adjustment up to 45 degree, I believe. Yep, up to a 45 degree angle adjustment down here. So overall, I think I'm gonna like this thing. I, like I said, I've used their products in the past and I've always been pretty happy with them. So I'm not, that's part of why I'm not really sure if I'm gonna do an actual review of this thing because I know I like their products in general. So unless I come across something that uh, really stands out at me, the biggest thing I could say is that this thing isn't cheap. What's it running for? Yep, King, King Custom Garage chiped in right then with that. Uh, S355 Evolution Saw. Oh, do do do. What's Trick Tool selling it for? $339 for this 14 inch version. So not crazy. Uh, has anybody else got it much cheaper? Mm, nope. It's a new saw that just hit the market. The folks at Trick Tools have it. I'll drop the link to the Trick Tools page here in the chat. Make sure I didn't lose my live stream here. I accidentally closed the uh, control panel for the live. Sorry. Ah, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, drop that into the chat. There's a link in the chat right now to the Trick Tools listing for this specific 14 inch chop saw. Ugh. It's hefty. All right. I'm tiny in this set because I backed it up so I could add all that saw stuff in there. King Custom Garage, do I have a TikTok? Yes, I do. Uh, my TikTok is Mandic Really, M A N D I C R E A L L Y. Uh, I've actually been posting on TikTok more than anywhere else lately because my TikTok has been growing pretty darn steadily. So. Oh, move the camera a little bit. Hey, that's a little better. So. Let me, uh, let's look at the specifications of that saw a little bit. Honestly, they hit me up about sending me the saw. I knew I wanted to check it out for sure. So I just said, okay, go ahead and send it. I really haven't looked at any of the information because I'm not planning on doing a full review of it. Uh, it comes with a three year manufacturer warranty. That is pretty darn cool. I, you won't find many chop saws with that good of a warranty to my knowledge. Like I know Milwaukee used to have a metal cutting chop saw similar to this design, but they don't produce it anymore. I want to say it was $400 when they did. Oh, yeah. And so, yeah. Um, let's see here. Any other information? It is an imported product. I knew that the folks I was dealing with are in the UK. They, the US branch sent me the saw itself. 2.4 horsepower motor. Let's see how much a, uh, they list a replacement blade on here. Yeah, a uh, 14 inch replacement blade for cutting steel is $87. 
a 14 inch stainless blade, that blade that comes in the saw is not for stainless. Believe me, I've seen people do that. You will tear that blade up pretty quick. That's $114 for that. Oh, they actually have a finer blade for thin steel. So if you're doing a lot of like exhaust pipe, I would say $108.75 for that and $89 for the aluminum blade. Though I've used that regular blade on aluminum in the past without issue, personally. I like those saws because they don't, I like the saw because they don't throw sparks. You don't end up with dust all over the shop. They throw mean chips because that blade is just taking chip after chip out of whatever you're cutting. But I do like the fact that they don't throw, you know, nasty dust and dirt. I am definitely a, uh, people pick on me for it. I'm a clean freak about the garage. Don't, don't get me wrong, I make a freaking mess, but I clean up, like I sweep a dozen times a day because I just can't stand working in filth. Why should I, yeah, I'm making a mess, but there's no reason I should then kneel down and kneel on some metal chips and dust and dirt and tear up my pants and I don't need to do that. I can sweep up and take 30 seconds sweep, put it in the trash and get back to what I'm doing and save myself trouble. So I like the fact that that thing doesn't produce much in the way of dust and dirt. Uh, ba -ba -ba. All right. Anybody got any questions or anything for the uh, chat here? Doesn't seem like there's anybody. King, King Custom Garage seems to be the one interacting the most. Well, free shit. I didn't notice that. Uh, actually, there's a, on Trick Tools website, there's, let me see if I can do a screen share here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, screen share with me. Yeah, here we go. So here's the saw on their website, Trick Tools, that is, the one link that I put in the chat. So free shipping on this, which, yeah, I, I, Anybody who knows this channel or has followed along for a little while, Trick Tools sponsored my SEMA 2019 coverage. They're good folks. I have a good relationship with them. I like them. But their shipping prices can be a little eh in this age of free shipping. So for this, it's all coming with free shipping, $339. It's a reasonable price compared to where else I'm seeing it. It's the new design saw. Cool. Happy to see that. Uh, there's a list of the actual sizes as of uh, different materials, like I said. I don't, they say that thing's 51 pounds, but it doesn't feel that heavy to me. Not trying to claim I'm strong or anything, but I'm a little guy. I'm not a little guy, I'm six foot one, but yeah, there's that shoe in action holding pipe in place. I really like to see that. I don't think I've ever seen a chop saw come with that shoe, uh, to actually that V-grooved shoe to hold round stock. I like that. It will be really handy on exhaust and chassis, like uh, tube work, so roll cages and such. That could be pretty handy. Boop, boop, boop. Back to. Oh. Bob asks. Uh, you're building small metal pedal cars for the kids around. Uh, should you get a small English wheel or a planishing hammer? I would say English wheel should come first. Um, planishing hammer can be a very versatile tool, but for shaping metal, for actually shaping metal, English wheel is superior. It's much more controllable to create smoother radius curves. The planishing hammer, it's, it's, it's going to strike in small area repeatedly over and over again and stretch, yes, and move metal, but controlling it and doing it over a larger area, even the size of a pedal car, nah, English wheel is the way you're going to want to go. If you want to try and smooth things out, a sandbag, or using a sandbag with mallets and an English wheel is going to provide you a better finished result than trying to use a planishing hammer would. You're going to have to hand hammer things, but if you skip planish with the English wheel, I need to do a video about skip planishing, but if you do that, you can really do a lot for smoothing out material and not have to use the planishing hammer at all, except when it comes to welding. 65 Ford says he's been using Evolution chop saws for going on four years, never used an abrasive saw again. I completely agree. Once you start using one of these carbide tip blades, yeah, the blades are expensive, but if you, if you treat the blade well, like you don't push, you just let the thing do what it's gonna do, 
it'll last quite a while, and I, I, I so greatly prefer it over the abrasive saw. So, uh, quick note, I drew the winner of the three-piece gear wrench ratchet giveaway this morning. I posted it on my YouTube story, Instagram story, and TikTok, letting know uh, Scott out of, or I'm sorry, Brian S. out of Montana won. So I'm going to be shipping this out to him either later today or tomorrow, winning that three-piece gear wrench ratchet set. So thank you to everybody who entered. There were like 90 people who entered, but over 300 entries because there were seven ways per person you could enter. So I like the Gleam giveaway. Anybody who did enter, what did you think about the Gleam giveaway thing? I think I'm going to do that entirely for the future of giveaways. I, uh, it's much, much easier on my end. And it keeps everybody honest. It's, you know, I can't, not that I ever would, but I can't game the system and, you know, pick whoever I would want to pick or some nonsense like that. I would never do that, but, you know, it takes that out of the equation. Folks who want to try and create fake accounts to enter in different ways would have to be really tricky about doing it. So the Gleam thing works out well, in my opinion. What do you folks think? I'd like to know if any of you folks who happen to be here did enter that. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Oh. I need to start taking this computer apart. I guess I could start doing that on this stream. I intended to do it. I intended to go live on another stream after this. But uh, yeah. I am really not looking forward to this. I have to fully disassemble this computer and then take some of the components out of it and put it into another computer case with a new motherboard and just a lot of work. I've already cleaned this morning, talking to you folks, unbox that thing. Yay. <laughs> mm, they claim 20 time blade life. Uh, 65 Ford says they claim 20 time blade life. You think it's closer to 10 to 15 times? I'd really have to do a, a a test and maybe I should do that. That could be something I could do with that saw is compare it to abrasive cutting setups as far as how the blade lasts and is it worth it and do a value thing because it's not a cheap chop saw. $339, that's not cheap. You could go to Harbor Freight and buy a $50 chop saw and a stack of, you know, for $300 you could buy a lot of abrasive blades. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on there. So I don't know. That might, be a, that might be something I could bother testing out and trying to figure out. I biggest problem I've had is I've never owned one of the Evolution Shop Saws before. I've worked with people who had them. Or I'm sorry, I've worked at shops who had them. And I had like stickers all over the thing telling my coworkers, don't cut stainless with this because we didn't have a stainless blade in it. And uh, telling them like, you know, do not push on it because you just want to... Let the saw do its work. Just lean, no, don't lean on it. You just gotta provide light pressure so it continues to cut. And if you lean on it, you, like I could hear it from across the shop. It pissed me off so much. I, my coworkers probably hated me. I, I could hear it from across the shop and I would yell, stop pushing on the thing. Because my, my boss would get pissed because it's an $80 blade and every time somebody chewed up the blade, I'd have to wait forever to get a new blade. Uh, such a pain in the butt. <laughs> computer, it's not Skynet. Um, no, it doesn't have the com the computational power necessary for Skynet. It is not a slouch of a computer, but it's actually like a year and a half behind at this point, which in computer terms, whoo, that's a lot. Whoa. Doo -doo -doo. Mm. Trying to look back here, make sure I didn't miss anything. Anybody? Nope. Okay. Oh, I don't want to do this. I'll turn this thing off. And consider what I'm going to need to do. Oh. Clearly, not a typical computer. Computers are one of my uh, hobbies, I guess you could say. They have been since I was a teenager. Before, I, Even before I got into cars, computers were my thing. I've always built my own computers. And 
that is no exception now. It just so happens that it helps in video editing. When I'm d dealing with the heavy 4K footage that my camera shoots, I need to have a high quality computer like this. Pop the glass panels off. Oh. So what are you folks, I, I'm trying to plan, I'm trying to plan uh, upcoming videos and I don't want to get into it right now, but things are going to get a little hectic for me in the near future. So I'm trying to do my best about coming up with video ideas that I can still produce in a timely manner and get up for you folks. So I definitely want to start on my Triumph project. Um, I'm going to do some basic videos about that because I really want to get that built, the bike running probably this summer, hopefully. Um, and what's the other thing I want to do? Oh, my dad's 65 GMC. My dad wants me to get down to North Carolina whenever I can and work on his 65 GMC. And I'm going to start doing more work on that. So there's going to be a lot of video work based around that, hopefully, if I can get to it. Uh, namely just because time, you know, when I'm actually working on it, it's hard to, to stop and film whatever it is I'm doing. Bob asked, what are you working on at your day job? Let me see if I can pull up here. Right now I'm working on a, um, what's it called? A 1991 VW actually. Um, let me pull it up here. Switch to screen share so you folks can see. I keep, uh, my Instagram is where I post things most regularly, where you might see more of, here it is. This 1991 VW Vanagon, or also Westphalia, it's a camper van, and had some rust on it. I've been doing rust repair on it so we can get it painted. So I had to, it's actually a fender right here that goes there, but I had to put a piece over top of the fender area to make the flange possible, and... There's the actual afterward. You can see up here uh, over top of the fender area. That's where the patch is. I did my best to metal finish that off so you can't see it anymore with the new fender in there. It's all just replacement panel work. It's pretty boring. I've had to make very few pieces for this project. Like I had to make this one piece uh, for the quarter area where the fender met. I used some of these clamps from Ben's Metal Shaping uh, over there in somewhere over in Europe, I forget, sorry Ben, but <laughs> used his clamps to hold that piece in because I wasn't able to get in there and clamp the piece in. Let's see, working on the front of the thing, I had to put a whole new front fender on the right side, left side I'm gonna piece a fender into it because the, the right front fender turned out to be a lot more work than I hoped it would be, unfortunately. I had to put, I had to, somebody years ago must have hooked on this uh, support piece and used it with like trying to, a chain to try and pull the thing out. It was really funny because clearly it didn't work. It was only like 18 gauge sheet metal they hooked to. It was not going to pull the van out of there. But the funnier part about it is I posted a video of it. So th there's the torn out sheet metal where they hooked it. And then to the right is a tow hook. I can't make that stuff up. They could have, they had a tow hook right there. Here's the replacement piece I made out of 16 gauge steel, made it a little heavier, cause why not? Uh, this piece ties back to the front suspension, and kind of just tightens up the whole front end. So, some dent repair work I've been doing on that thing. I, the funny thing is I use, I don't know if I've ever told you folks on here. One thing I use when I'm doing dent repair work is, I use die chem, uh, blue, machinist blue. If you've ever been into like milling and lathe work, machinist work, they use what's called die chem. You, you wipe it on, it's a really thin blue layer. What I'll do is I'll wipe down this whole panel with it and I'll go over it with a sanding block, just 180 grit sandpaper and I'll scuff it. On the left, you can see there, that is after initially scuffing it with the sandpaper. So it shows me anywhere if it's still blue is a low spot. Anywhere if it's really sanded is a high spot. So I can tell how to hammer and dolly this a little better. 
on the right is the not finished product. There's more work to do there yet, but that's actually, I reapplied the blue dye, I sanded it again, and you can see how much better it is after just a little bit of time hammer and dollying it, trying to improve the, the finish and get, a, get that dent knocked out. The funny thing is, I don't have the greatest touch. I have to work by sight more than touch. My sense of touch is not as good as like my boss. My boss at my day job, he can touch any, he can touch like a machined flat surface and feel the imperfections in it. I can't. Uh, so, but we both seem to end up missing this for some reason. We didn't notice how bad this corner was. So I had to clean that up a little bit. And now I'm working on this rocker panel where it's the worst rust on this entire van. Uh, Thursday, my Friday, uh, I just got this cleaned up. I removed the rusted section and cleaned up the areas. So I'll come through here and I'll primer all of this so that it prevents rust between the layers of material that I'm going to be installing. And then I'll spot weld the new piece on and then I'll weld up and metal finish that seam. Since I can't get to the inside and the outside, this is going to be a two-man job. My, my, my boss is going to have to be inside or outside, vice versa. And we're going to have to you know, tack it, hammer it, tack it, hammer it, and we're going to have to tag team it and both do that project. So. Bob, anything about making panels? I really need to do more panel creation work. I, biggest hurdle I have right now is the studio space that I use for filming for you folks is so small. Trying to produce quality, you know, I only have like one area I can film in in there. I need a bigger space so badly. Yeah, die cam. I like die cam. Like there are, you know, purpose-made uh, guide coats from, you know, paint and body folks for paint work. I like die cam because it dries very quickly. I just, all I do is I put die cam onto a rag and then I wipe down the panel with the rag. It goes a long way. A whole bottle lasts me like a year. It dries really quickly. It sands off easily. The only problem is if you drop the bottle and you spill it, good freaking luck because it makes a hell of a mess. I have done that before. It took a lot of paint thinner to clean it up. Anything else you folks? Uh, this is when the saw came in. Oh, uh, yeah. I, and most of you folks, I think, that are here probably already commented on the, or saw my video about the mean comments on YouTube. <laughs> Who has the time or the energy for this crap? Yeah, that's, that's really dumb. Steven Rivet, hello! Yeah, this sucks. It's kind of weak. Anyway, more mug. More I had a videos. lot of fun with this video. Thanks. But uh, yeah, that whole that whole mean comments video, I had fun making that. Uh, people keep saying, oh, I, uh, some folks said I dwell on the mean comments too much, or you just did a lot of really nice encouraging stuff in here, and I appreciate that. I wasn't looking for like, pats on the back or anything like that. It was just having some fun and getting out of video. Uh, so yeah. King Custom Garage, you gotta go. Have a good one. Thanks for coming around. Used to use Prussian Blue for lapping valves. Die Chem, I believe, is pretty much just Prussian Blue. It's just a brand of it, really. What is gentian violet? In piercing, you use gentian violet. Okay, so it's gentian violet is antimicrobial dye. Yeah, okay, I thought so. Anyway, how long have I been live here? 38 minutes. I find, as a metal worker and a fabricator, I find the engineering and everything that goes into computer cases is kind of crazy. Like, this whole big aluminum, or not aluminum, uh, steel, this whole big steel case with tempered glass panels and everything, and granted it's made overseas, but this whole thing is $200, uh, the case, not everything inside of it, of course, but, I don't know. I find it interesting. No. 
old. I got the chat pulled up here on my phone. It's easier to see there for some reason. Diesel Punk Cummins, hello, what am I doing tomorrow? Uh, most likely I am continuing to swap my computer over because I doubt I will get the whole project done today, both disassembly, filming, and putting together the new setup. And then I'd like to edit that video because I'm going to do a whole dedicated video about this on my second YouTube channel, Alan Nandick. I might as well plug that. I have very few followers on that channel. Um, most of you folks that follow me on Hot Rod Hippie probably do not care at all about my second channel. I'll be completely honest about that. But, you know, it exists, so I might as well plug it. I mostly post just, like, life vlog type stuff and camera and computer related content on that channel. So hopefully I'll be doing more on that channel in the near future. I post like once a month at best. So yeah, if anybody's interested, it exists. Go check it out. Alan Mandic, all one word. Hey, Alan Mandic. There's a there's my name right there. Diesel Punk Cummins. Why do you ask what uh, what I'm doing tomorrow? Is there a show in the area or something? I know next week um, there's a show at the Big E Expo Center a uh, race car show or something like that. I happen to see somebody, I think Lebrec posted about it. Let me see if I can find it on Instagram. Not now. Lebrec. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, there's a car show here in Massachusetts next weekend. Northeast Motorsports Expo, March 3rd. Uh, 13th through the 15th in West Springfield, Massachusetts at the Big E, or well, Eastern State Exposition, blah, blah, blah. Uh, am I coming to any local shows this year? I am I'm very well may go to this one, this Northeast Motorsports Expo next weekend. I'm not 100%. I don't think I've, it's only the second annual they're saying. I don't remember hearing about this one last year. I went to a show at the at the Expo Center a couple of years ago. Outdoor local show at UMass. I'll have to look at that. Uh, I want to get to more shows this year. Whether or not it's going to happen, my track record is not particularly good. So there's that. Uh, ba -ba. Stephen, uh, Stephen asks, do you frequent local online and tool auctions? I found I can get stuff for 10 cents on a dollar for really expensive tools because there isn't much interest in them. Uh, I used to. Uh, I used to do that a lot. I used to be on online auctions looking all the time. And I picked up a few deals off of like Gov Liquidation. I bought a, uh, a, a very expensive shrinker machine, shrinker stretcher machine that costs like $5,000 new. I got it for like $400. Um, and so, yeah, I, I used to do that. I get auction, a couple of auction houses mail me their flyers every time there's a show. I don't do it so much anymore because I am, honestly, I don't buy many tools anymore. If a company doesn't send me a tool to check out, I've got most of what I need to do my job. So unless I outfit a shop, when I, whenever I get around to outfitting a shop more in depth, uh, we will, it'll be a different story. But for right now, I've got most of what I need to do my job. So I, uh, I, save myself from myself by not going to or looking at auctions because I would totally be buying up like boxes full of vice grips and stuff if I could. I spend all my money on camera equipment and computer stuff now because I can't help myself. Swap meets are a good place to buy cheap. Uh, Diesel Punk Cummins said something about how decent places to buy cheap stuff is swap meets. That is a good one. I have a buddy who is a mechanic, and he got into it when he first started as a mechanic. He instead of buying like Craftsman or Harbor Freight tools just to get him by, he went to swap meets and yard sales and bought up Snap On and Mac and Matco tools, and then he just turned around to the tool guys and had them warranty the stuff. He bought stuff for pennies on the dollar and had a fully kitted out professional work set up for pretty cheap by doing things that way. I, I can't argue with that. I have done that myself. I've definitely hit up yard sales and he actually informed me one back in Pennsylvania one time where I went and bought up like a couple, I, I think I added it up. It was like $2,000 worth of stuff I bought for like 200 bucks. So... 
65 Ford had to stop going to auctions because too many tools, not enough space. I hear you. That's a, a part of why I don't, I don't bother. You know, I, I, especially I've made the mistake a couple of times where I, the annoying thing is like one place I can remember I bought something. I was looking at this online auction and I wanted to buy a TIG welder, I'll, I'll say. I don't think that was it, but whatever. A, a TIG welder. And I was bidding on it. And then I bid on like a rotary table for a milling machine. If you're familiar with, you know, it's a, you turn the handle and the table turns. So if you're trying to mill like a, a, a curved slot in something, you could use that to turn it underneath the milling head. I ended up winning the rotary table for like 20 bucks. But I didn't win the TIG welder. And it was like a four hour drive to go pick the thing up. So I ended up just paying for the rotary table and telling them, keep it. I don't care. It's not worth my drive to come get it. And they wouldn't ship it to me because the thing weighed like, well, they would ship it to me, but they wanted to charge me a, um, a rigging fee because that's one of the problems you get into with some auction houses and auctions is, oh yeah, you bought this mill, but now you get, need to get the mill out of there. Well, you have to hire our rigger. Yeah, you paid $200 for a mill, but you have to pay our, our rigger $500 just to load it onto a trailer for you. And you're not allowed to move it yourself because insurance won't allow it, which I understand, but eh, it's annoying. Really good local swap meet tractor show and car show in Bernardston in May. Is that, that's not that one you told me. No, that's... Whatever, there's that show right by Bernardston. You, you've told me about this on my way home from... Oh, um, sorry, the tractor show. Is that that single cylinder show that they put on? It used to be in that big field in Bernardston right off of 91. It, that field's gone now. It's a warehouse now, but I think they moved it somewhere else in town. Hmm... Let me see here. Anything else to talk about? I don't really want to dive into tearing down this computer on stream at the moment. Because <sighs> I'm not looking forward to doing it. Let's see what else there is to see. Looking back at videos here. See how popular or unpopular recent uploads have been. I know I've done a handful of product stuff lately, which is not... I try, not, I try to spread that stuff out a little bit. And unfortunately, that has not been happening. I might as well plug something since I'm here. My ba -ba -ba -ba. If anybody has not seen this video, since it's got 200 some views, you haven't most likely. The tractor shows by Kringle Candle. That's the one I'm thinking of then. Okay, I see the signs on the way to work because I pass right by Kringle Candle basically on my way to my day job. But anyway, the uh, limited edition Street Rod postcards, technically the offer is over, but I've still got a stack of them. So anybody who wants one, dollar, you just got to sign up on Patreon, patreon.com slash hot rod hippie. Sign up for a dollar. You can cancel after you sign up. Just send me your, your mailing address and I'll send you one of these postcards that I've got here. Choo -choo -choo. Enlarge this. It's got this uh, blown Dodge pickup truck that I photographed at SEMA and just a little thank you message on the back. So. Anybody who might be interested, that does exist if you want to check it out. And then Patreon. Patreon Hot Rod Hippie. Uh, Gil, that's what I was thinking of. The, the Hot Rod Show in Gil. Alright, so we talked about the Evolution Chop Saw that they sent me. The 50 pound beast of a saw that I'm really excited to try out on a metal shop project sometime soon. I need to figure that out. I need to build a new welding bench, and that's definitely going to be the tool to do that with. Anybody else have any questions, anything to talk about? I don't want the stream to end up being like two, three hours. I thought about running, just running the stream as long as I felt like running it, and then working on my computer in the interim, but uh, I feel like that's probably pretty silly. Not looking forward to this. Which stinks, because I love working on computers. Anyway, so, yeah. Huh. 
trying to think if there's anything else new, interesting, exciting, anything going on that I have not informed you folks about lately. Oh, I want to do shop tours. I need to get back to shop tours now that winter is passing by. I have a couple places in mind in the very near future that I'm going to be doing uh, almost certainly. I've discussed with them in the past and whatever, working them out. Oh, okay. Hey, perfect timing, Diesel Punk. Um, yeah. Would I be interested in checking out? You're, you basically work in a fairly general fabrication shop, right? That might be interesting. The point of my fabrication series, shop tour fabrication series, is to show people different perspectives, different shops, and how other people set up their shops so you have a concept of how you might want to set up your shop. Uh, you know, little tips and tricks, little ideas you might glean from them. So I may be interested in checking out that because any shop can teach you something. Like the, the Night Owl Tattoo Furniture Shop that, he, that, that uh, Aaron runs in his basement building those armrests and stuff. I thought he had some pretty neat and interesting organization concepts in there because he's working in a really tiny shop. So I found that interesting. So... I may well be interested. I will be in touch with you because there's a few things we should discuss as far as that stuff is concerned. Mm. Wayne's Garage, call all the way from Australia at 3.48 in the morning. Hello, good morning from down under. Awesome, thank you for coming around at 3.48 in the morning. You're uh, like me up at this time. I don't think I'd be on YouTube yet. Usually when I wake up, I check my comments and messages and emails and then I take a shower and get ready for my day. So, good morning. Unless you're still up. Steven mentioned that Ron Covell has a good video of shop tours. I knew Ron toured, um, what's his name? God, I should know this. I've talked with him. I've had him on the channel. Uh, Runge, Chris Runge, or Rungi, Rungi, I don't know exactly how he pronounces his German name. Um, I know he did a shop tour at his shop, his little shop where he builds these custom quote-unquote Porsches. Uh, so that was cool. That was neat to see. I, I just like seeing how other people set things up because you always, you daydream. We all, I'm sure you folks do it. I do it all the time. You daydream about how you're going to set up your shop and, and your dream shop configuration. And then in real world, when you start setting it up and you start building out a shop, you realize that all of your ideas don't work for one reason or another. This machine's too close to that machine. You don't have enough square footage, whatever. So I find it interesting to see how people work around things. One, I might as well just tell you, like, I know I'm going to check out Buck's Customs again yet this sometime soon. Uh, the upholstery shop that I checked out. He's done some upgrades. I don't know if we're going to do a full shop tour video, but I want to do like an update video because shortly after I did a shop tour video of his place two years ago, he up he changed the place. <laughs> so the uh, shop tour would actually be different this time. Cornfield Customs out in Ohio. Uh, Mike Wagner out there does beautiful metal shaping work and a lot of different traditional hot rod stuff, race cars. He's building a salt flat land speed car. So I want to go check out his shop and do some metal shaping demonstrations with him. Uh, we, we talked about that at SEMA. Definitely need to get out there. I've been to his old shop, not his current shop before. So I need to work on that. I'd like to get to Rob Ida's shop this year in New Jersey. I just got to talk to Rob about that. Diesel Punk Commons, you suggested Ray's shop and maybe do a little more. I, uh, that's another one. I want to get over to Ray's shop and do a follow-up, maybe show what projects are being worked on now. And I can talk about his past and his, his story a little bit more as to where he came from as far as shaping is concerned. I know it, but you folks probably don't or may not. And actually, that was, I need to build a new welding bench. And actually, I was thinking I'm going to call Ray and see if I can go over there, use his shop space for a little bit, build a welding bench, and kind of like, roll an interview together so it could be like a really overall interesting video for folks or a couple of videos so that would be cool two types of shops one <laughs> 65 ford says there are two types of shops one that they're uh, so big they don't have money to fill it with tools or they're so small they have more tools than they appropriately fit i in my experience that is pretty darn true um i don't know about too small i've i've some packed shops. I worked at a shop before, whatever, I'm not going to say the name. It doesn't exist anymore, but it doesn't matter. 
the fabrication area that I worked in was 10,000 square feet. And we didn't have enough tools. Like we had 20 cars in there, but we needed, we had like one, two lifts and, you know, a crappy English wheel and no planishing hammer. Oh, we did have a planishing hammer. Okay. Well, just like not enough stuff, not at all enough stuff to do a job in my opinion. And it was just a tooth and nail fight all the time where I'm like, we need more equipment, but I know you guys have a big nut to crack with the space. But then I've been in like tiny little garage. I work in a 400 square foot shop that's better equipped than that 10,000 square foot shop was. My day job, the shop I work in is, is 400 square feet and it is crammed with stuff. Let me see if I can show you a perspective on it since I, I showed the Vanagon project, but you can actually see how small the space I work in is in this video or this picture. Just pull it up here. Yeah, so that's the shop that I work in. It's a single bay. Uh, people have single bay garages larger than the shop space that I personally work in on a daily basis. The van takes up most of it. I have to dodge around that pull max every day when I'm walking in and around the shop. In that shop space, I have most of the stuff is my boss, not mine. There is some of my stuff in there, but we have pull max, welding bench, full size bandsaw full-size drill press, stand pedestal style, pedestal mounted, planishing hammer, English wheel, bead roller, magnetic brake from Bailey, jump shear, 52 inch jump shear, a corner notcher, a spot welder, a MIG welder, and a TIG welder. And the MIG welder and the TIG welder are not little ones, they are full industrial size units. The MIG welder is a Millermatic 251, and the TIG welder is a Miller Synchro Wave 250, so the big old regulator rectifier machine, all of that crammed into this little space here. Let's see if I can. I don't generally post pictures of how small the space is because I'm not trying to pick on how small it is, but like when I was working on this 55 Chevy recently, oh, and my snap on small toolboxes in there. I have two other toolboxes that don't fit in there. Um, when I was working on this 55 Chevy late, uh, recently, I wasn't able to open both doors at the same time. I'd have to move the car over to open one door or over to open the other door to open them fully. Um, 400 square feet is too little, in my opinion, for a shop space. But, you know, whatever. It works. Try to see if I can... You can kind of see in the background some of the perspective of the shop a little bit. Back in the corner. It's so crammed full of stuff. The more tools I get, the more space I take up. Uh, it's such a pain. It's life. It works. I get projects done, but there is not a whole lot of space in there to get projects done with. So yes, thank you for that input, folks. Ray, definitely on the list. I forget there was some. I want to get to American Auto Wire this year and check out their wiring warehouse and the, the factory. They're in New Jersey building custom wiring harnesses for vehicles. I've been using their products for a while now, and I'd like to get down there and and do a tour with them if they'll have me. I've reached out to them before. Oh, here's a better perspective on it. There's the shop. Everything you are seeing there is the entirety of the shop. It's 20 foot by 20 foot. <laughs> yeah. Anybody not familiar? I don't think I've mentioned, I don't, I don't hide it. I try not to hide it by any means. I, I'm not, I just, you know, um, this and my day job are technically separate things. Uh, A-Class Act Auto Restoration is my day job in Ringe, New Hampshire. And yeah, so. Holy crap, that's small. Yes, yes it is. I get, I make do, but I get done. It's a lot, but uh, anything, by the way, I've shown numerous times there. If you don't already follow Instagram, Hot Rod Hippie on Instagram, I post my work on there, day job work and this stuff as well on a regular basis. I try to post a couple times a week at the least, um, just mainly because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are my most popular days. When I post on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, video or things don't get likes, but whatever. That's social media nonsense. That space seems like an opportunity for somebody. I'm, I, you can, you can, people have built a lot less, or a lot more in 400 square foot spaces. You can do it. I do it. I get the job done. It would just be more efficient for me to have more space, but I don't. So 
whatever. Is what it is. Joe says, you folks turn out quality work in that small shop. The quality of work is what is important. Absolutely. Um, I, that's one thing I love about the shop I'm at now at A Class Act is, is we're focused on quality work. And I really appreciate that. And it, it's rare that I've ever had a boss who expects more of me than I expect of myself. Uh, that sounds, I don't know how that sounds. But usually I have bosses that... In my experience over the years, more often than not, bosses have told me to stop bothering to put in so much effort versus telling me to go further. This boss tells me to go further. I really appreciate that. So, now granted, my section of the shop is 400 square feet. The whole shop is, is larger than that. We have a paint booth, we got a whole bodywork section and a mechanical section and an area just for like compressor and our toolboxes and such where my other toolbox is. Like here's a little perspective of the shop here. Let's see if I can find another perspective of the main shop. I'm very envious of my dad's shop. I'll show you that in a second. I just saw a picture of that. Oh, yeah. My shop portion is 400 square feet. The main shop where we do more mechanical and assembly work, so like finished projects going together, is, is much larger. I want to say it's, you know, 1,500 square feet or something like that. It's overall, the entire building is smaller than other shops I've worked in. So. But it gets, it gets the job done. We, we can do the work within that space. I just think it would be more efficient with a little more space. But it's not my building. Whatever, you know. I can do my job. Here's a couple, I'll show you a couple pictures of my dad's garage down in North Carolina he just built. This is 1,500 square feet, I think. It's got a two-post lift in there. It's got a, a bay off to the side, which is this. Off to the right there, next to the lift, is kind of going to be workbenches and like the fabrication area. And then the main shop area is right around the lift itself. It's got a bathroom off to the left there. And there's the whole step back shop of it, shot of it. It's actually a whole area upstairs. He could technically build a um, apartment in there, though it's not zoned for it. But yeah. Gentlemen's Motor Racing. Woo, classic mini. Yeah, that is a Honda powered Mini Cooper that uh, my boss has been working on. I didn't do anything on this project, just been hanging out and yeah, whatever, it's at the shop. None of my work on that car. Um, Honda B14A motor in it, so VTEC Honda motor in it, wide body obviously, it's got fender flares that are gonna be on there, but they're painted and mounted separately. Make sure to check back here. Bo -bo -bo. Wayne's Garage, you live in your workshop. I, uh, I'm kind of envious of that. I've always kind of wanted to have a, a shop where I could work and live, but, you know, I don't know. I'm single, so I could. Um, Dave, you mentioned there's a metal-shaped meet. Uh, I'm going to assume that's probably the metal meet happening in Minnesota because they're usually out in the Midwest. I can tell you for a fact I won't make it out there in May. My travel plans for this year, I really want to get some more travel in this year, uh, but I really don't have anything set in stone right now, especially with the way the world is right now. I don't want to say the word because YouTube hates the words, but um, yeah, so I'm trying to avoid that stuff. Diesel Punk, you said your shop is too spread out and wide. I get that. Um, that 10,000 square foot shop that I worked in, all the stuff was off in like one corner of it, and I could totally see that. Uh, there's there's a fine balance there. I think personally, if you're only working on one or two projects at a time, I think somewhere between 2,000 to 4,000 square feet is like ideal in my mind. Um, like when I worked at Tucci's Hot Rods, let me see if I can find their shop. Their shop was really well laid out in my opinion. I worked there for not that long, but um, their shop is really well set up, in my opinion, and good utilization of space. Steven, you asked, what tools do you use most in a day? I would have to say, absolutely, the number one thing that I use is hammer and dolly, tape measure, square, so like a, you know, a ruler, square, 
for laying things out, and angles and such, um, and die grinders, right angle die grinders, yeah, those are probably my, go aside from welder, take welder too, those are my most used, hammer and dolly, like every day, oh, and pliers, good set of Nipex pliers, like I start out my day grabbing my pliers, hammers and a couple of hammers and dollies, and then tape measure and get to work, usually. Even if I'm doing metal shaping, dent repair, rust repair, I end up reaching for those things. If I'm doing electrical or mechanical work, obviously, not so much, but yeah. And, and I, I harp on it a fair bit. I truly, truly, truly say invest in good quality hammers and dollies because I use them so, so, so much that it just doesn't make sense to not have good ones, in my opinion. It's, it's just one place I don't see skimping. Um, because I make so much of a use of them. I, you know what? I, I'm not even going to bother looking up where Tucci's Hot, I, uh, Tucci's Hot Rods is another shop where I want to do a tour because I think their shop is really well laid out for what it is. It's not huge. It's, uh, I'm guessing three to 4,000 square feet. They can work on, depending how they cram it, like four or five, like three, four cars comfortably at a time. And they've got power hammer, two pull maxes, mill, lathe, drill press, a bunch of stuff. And it's a really well set up shop. I like that. I need to get over there, over in Marcy, New York, and check it out and do a tour of that space for you folks. Diesel Punk, you said when you started out, uh, you didn't know how to go farther above and beyond, then you found a good balance. You get, I, I know what you mean. I, I get carried away. And don't get me wrong, at, at my day job, my boss does have to rein me in from time to time. Like, hey, this is taking too long. We got to get this done. Because I try to just, like, make everything as good as I can. You know, it, it, not everything is a Riddler car. I have to, re have to remember that sometimes. Because um, I want the customer to get the best quality job that they can out of me. And I want my reputation to be... I think my reputation is on the line with every car I build, so I try to do my best with it. You know, whether or not that uh, that play or that comes across, I, I don't know. How long have we been live now? Oh, an hour and six minutes. So, Sorry, I'm just looking through notifications on my phone here, and some of them are strange. YouTube is recommending that I stream something to my TV for some reason. I haven't seen that notification before. Anyway, yeah. Any other questions for me, folks? Any other ideas, shops I should check out, tours I should do? I talked with How To Automotive, um, YouTube channel How To Automotive. We were talking about after SEMA next year, maybe try and check out EV West, um, or this year, 2020, SEMA. Go and check out the EV West shop. I haven't talked to those folks. He knows those folks. I don't. But uh, that'd be cool, I think. Check out. Personal opinion, you know. I don't know how much people care about the electric vehicle stuff. I don't think I'd build one for myself, but I would like to build one. Oh, I gotta drain the coolant out of this computer because it is water cooled and start disassembly. I actually used car parts to build this thing too. Like these clamps over here that are holding this coolant hose, they are made for you clamps made for a fuel line on cars, but I use them for computer parts because I could. It's a different idea that, uh, and they're actually, they're rib nutted. I actually drilled and put rib nuts into the case because people in the computer world just aren't familiar with this stuff, and I was, so. <sighs> Whatever. Mm. Trying to think if there's anything I can or should do on this thing while I'm here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
still got energy I should work on. Sorry, I'm, I'm probably not being very entertaining at the moment. I'm just thinking about what, where my energy would be best spent on this thing while I still have it from caffeine for the day. Welder's best friend, make sure you get your jitters in in the morning. I'm a shaky person anyway, so I, am, I will never ever be the freehand TIG master, that's for darn sure, especially with how many of these I drink on a regular basis. Any videos I want to highlight? Might as well mention stuff. Videos you folks may not have seen. You probably have. Doesn't matter. Sixty-five Ford. You said exactly what I'm thinking. You never know how bad cheap hammers are until you hold and swing a nice one. I used Harbor Freight set for years. Now I cringe when I hold them. I totally agree. Like I reviewed, let me pull it up. I reviewed Harbor Freight hammers on the channel a couple years ago, I think now, two years ago, maybe. Yeah, two years ago, I reviewed Harbor Freight hammers on this channel. Ugh, look at that quality. This is when I was still filming on a camcorder in 1080p. Uh, and it didn't have a good intro or anything. People, there are more than a few people in the comments of this video who think that I'm just being elitist and stupid. Like, those hammers are perfectly fine. They're not. They're just not. My go-to recommendation, I've mentioned this numerous times. I think I mentioned it pretty much every stream. My go-to recommendation for body hammers is... The Ron Covell Hammer and Dolly set from the folks at Trick Tools. I think these things are awesome, excellent. The price is, if you add, these are, they're made in the USA, top quality, lifetime warranty, excellent quality. Gotta go, Bob. Nice seeing you. Thanks for coming around. They're excellent quality. I love those hammers. Uh, they're like $300 for a 10-piece set. But if you add up Snap-on or Martin Tools hammers, it, yeah, $299.95. If you add up those hammers, individual hammers, all five hammers, five dollies, it adds up to far more than that from other brands. Steven, you asked, can I describe rate, uh, the rate and milestones of my subscriber count? Let's uh, see if I can pull up something that will allow me to do that. Mm, bah, bah, bah. I need um, Social Blade. Social Blade, if you're not familiar, is a website that shows you live subscriber count. Um, I can't, like, honestly, this channel is not growing nearly as quickly as I would like to see it. I'm sure everybody who's ever had a YouTube channel says that same thing. I'm at 16.9, thou are 16,900 subscribers at the moment. I appreciate everybody. I, I'm not, like, I don't expect the world. I don't expect I'll ever hit 100,000 subscribers or anything like that. I'm not trying to complain. I'm just being realistic. I wish it would grow a little bit more than it is. That's life. Um, buh, 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 where am I looking here? Try and see if I can find, like, a, a chart of overall growth. Detailed statistics. Live subscriber count. Trying to find. Well, here's a here's a chart I'll pull up and show you. Uh, not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted either. Hi. Mm, screen share. This is Social Blade. So this is a subscriber count showing my gain of subscribers on the week of. I gained, like, the best week I've had in the past two years, well, three years, I gained 361 subscribers in a week. So, like, growth is slow. It's always going to be. It's kind of just the way it happens. But I can tell you for a fact, November 19th through 26th of 2018, that was SEMA, SEMA 2018. I just made content that people wanted to see, and that's, and it cost me a bunch of money to do it. It cost me... Those 361 subscribers were expensive.
Diesel Punk, you said I know you you've had a decent amount of subscribers, and you said you never really got the growth or engagement you wanted on your channel. I totally understand that. Like, it, I've been doing this. Uh, the thing that I understand best, to my knowledge, understanding of YouTube, which I'm not an expert. I I don't think anybody is an expert that doesn't actually work at YouTube. To my understanding, the best thing that I have done is post every week as much as I can. I still only skipped a few weeks in the past couple of years. And I find that to be a pretty good and a pretty good way of doing it. Post every week consistently and continually trying to improve my quality. I listen to what people say. You know, in my earlier videos, my very early videos, there was a lot of me just standing there talking to a camera like this without showing the product. I would hold up the product and this was as good as you were going to see it. I wasn't, I needed to show more detail. If, if I'm talking about screwdrivers, I should be showing the screwdrivers, not me holding the screwdrivers from 15 feet away. So that was, stole, that was part of it. I focused on that. I listened to what the viewers were saying. They wanted more tutorials. They wanted more close-up shots of the products and the, the actions. Well, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Uh, the other thing that I make a point of doing is I try to answer every comment I get. I don't answer them all, um, but I try. If people have questions, I do my best to answer them. It keeps people coming back and checking out the channel over and over again to keep their interest in it. But then if nobody's asking questions, you don't have that engagement to do. So uh, it's, it's difficult. Because, uh, hey, I'll, I'll show you. I mean, I, I already showed a couple times here, but I'll show you again. My second channel, you know, the Hot Rod Hippie has... 16,900 subscribers. Alan Mandic, my second channel, has 113. And I've been doing that channel as long as I've been doing Hot Rod Hippie. I haven't posted nearly as many videos. I post maybe one a month. I started out doing mainly gaming content because it was just fun. And I kind of moved away from that because that's a hard market to get into. And yeah, so I, I average like 50 views per video on that channel and I think those 50 people are most likely like friends and family of mine um yeah so I don't know YouTube is hard man it's so hard Diesel Punk you said you still want to be a YouTuber but you know zero motivation to make them I totally understand that like it is hard if I had if I had anything else going on in my life over the past three years, I don't know that I would be doing this. And that's not to say that I don't love doing this. That's not to say that I regret doing this. Anything like that. That is literally just me saying I don't think I would have the time for it. Because I work a 40-hour work week, uh, day in, day out, or well, four days a week. I work 10-hour days, four days a week at a Class Act Auto, and... I drive an hour and 20 minutes one way. So from Monday to Thursday, I have zero time to film. I do not have time. I might film like a tool sitting on a workbench at work. That's about it. Also, it's my boss's shop, not mine. So he, he doesn't necessarily want me filming there. I totally understand that. And I respect that. So I try not to do it. So I only have Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get videos every week out for you folks. And then it's Ten, minimum video time is like five hours worth of editing and that is rare commonly it's closer to 10 hours sometimes it's upwards of 40 hours depending on the video and how complex it is that's for editing time that's not recording time that's not you know research time that's not dealing with the companies and, and getting them to send me products and going to SEMA so I can meet and shake hands there's so much involved with it Joe, you said many people seem to like watching project, projects being worked on over time. Maybe consider your current format plus a little time on each video dedicated to long-term projects. You were 100% right. Um, I know for a fact, I, I believe for a fact, <laughs> that uh, the number one thing that this channel lacks is a project. Something to keep people coming back every single week to see the progress being made or every couple weeks to see the progress being made demonstrating what I'm talking about in these videos by doing it on projects. You're, you're totally, totally, totally right. Problem is, I, I, 
for like a year and a half, two years now, I have known that, that is what I need to do. I don't have enough shop space. At, like, I don't really have enough time either, but I would make the time happen. I don't have enough space. I'd hoped I'd be able to do my Triumph motorcycle build within the space that I have because it's a much smaller thing, and I've kind of figured out that that's not going to work. I have such a, it's hard to explain. I will show you folks sometime in the near future how small my space is, but uh, yeah, you're right. You're totally right, and I hope to do more project work very, very soon. Um, within the next month or two, I hope to have some more project, actual hands-on project work coming up, but yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Wayne's Garage, you only recently started gaining subscribers. Like, there's no rhyme or reason to this sometimes. Like, I cheated. I can tell you that. I don't know if I've ever told you folks on this channel. I cheated when I started this channel, technically, because uh, I had 2,000 subscribers when I started the Hot Rod Hippie. And if anybody's actually bothered to look back through my videos, you'll probably figure out why real quick. Let me show you. Uh, ba -ba -ba, screen share. Videos. Sort by, let's sort by my most popular video of all time. I've got like 200 some videos up on this channel. My most popular video is from literally 10 years ago. And it is Hedgehog Bath Time. It is this crappy quality video that I posted of giving my pet hedgehog a bath two years ago, or 10 years ago. It's got 2.5 million views and it earned me like 2000 subscribers by doing nothing. So when I started this channel, I had 2,000 subscribers right off the bat. And I often wonder how many of those 2,000 subscribers have unsubscribed since I actually started doing something with this YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> so I wonder if I've gained 16,000 subscribers or have I gained 14,000 subscribers? I don't know and I probably never will know. <laughs> yeah, there's a little glimpse into the past of the Hot Rod Hippie. Back then, it was called Mad Max Mandic because it was just a random YouTube channel that I used to comment on other people's stuff. Joe, even small project, not even working on a car, but showing metalworking. You're right. Um, like with the Triumph motorcycle build, I want to build a full fuel tank, a cafe racer style seat. Those are smaller projects. That'll show actually like metal shaping demonstrations, welding demonstrations, metal finishing demonstrations. I need to do that. Um, Diesel Punk Cummins, your worst video is your most viewed video. Isn't it just the way that works out? I find, like I said, there are some videos that I legitimately put 40 hours into editing them. I'll, I'll work on them on over a span of a couple of weeks, and I'll spend like tens of hours. Like I find routinely, and I'm not going to stop doing them just because this is the case, but I find routinely that my most viewed videos or my least viewed videos are the ones I put the most time and effort into. And that's so frustrating. I'm not going to stop doing them, but I do find that to be the case. Sometimes the videos that I just slap together and like, let me think, there's one not too long ago that did pretty well. Oh, here it is. The, I did the, a couple of weeks ago in January, I did my basic fabrication shop tips, work smarter, not harder. That has 4.6 thousand views. That's decent. That's pretty good for this channel right now. That was like on a Wednesday. I was like, I need a video for Saturday. What am I going to do this week? I'm not going to say I half-assed it. I, I truly wanted to present that information to you folks, but I definitely didn't put nearly the effort into that video that I do into some other ones. And it got better views than most of my videos do. No rhyme or reason sometimes. Oh, ba -ba -ba. Sixty-five Ford, you always come up with a million excuses not to do video stuff. Just keep doing it. Yeah, I, I think that's legitimately true. There are channels on here that I think they do terrible work, and I don't think there's much value in what they're producing. And you know what? There doesn't need to be. But there's plenty of channels that do stuff that I'm like, why? Why do they get a million views and I don't? It works, and they just keep doing it, and it keeps working. Good for them, you know. Awesome. Good for them. I just wish I could get a little piece of that pie. <laughs> now, an hour and 20 minutes at this point. We've been up. Check back here.
Steven, you mentioned it's good to have a second channel when, when you do personal interest stuff. You lose subscribers immediately, and it'd be nice if people had an open mind, but it just doesn't happen. I agree. I wish that everything that's on my second channel, I could post on this channel and just have all the views within one space. And some of you folks might like the stuff that's on my second channel, but you never see it because it's over there, and that's fine. I'm not, I'm, I've, I've highlighted it a few times in here. I wasn't really trying to make you like tell you folks, go check it out. But like, um, that having that second channel to do that stuff with does make sense. Because I know for a fact if I posted like a vegan cooking video on the Hot Rod Heavy, people aren't going to care about it. They're just not. And that's the way it is. That's fine. If I post, I post dumb vlogs over there when I like drive and go check stuff out and like hang out with friends for a day. People on here are not going to care about that, but I have a place to do that stuff with. And honestly, it's fun. I, I have a video actually, it's 1.30 right now. Uh, I have a new video coming out on the Hot Rod or Alan Mandic channel um, any minute now at 2 o'clock it's coming up where it's just custom computers like like my computer from PAX. I went to PAX East in Boston last week, a video game convention. And uh, I just filmed custom computers and I made a video out of it and posted it on that channel. It's coming up at 2 p.m. today. Like, I have an outlet for that stuff and I like that. So I'm going to continue to keep it separate, but I would recommend that. If anybody's trying to grow a YouTube channel and you're doing like family videos mixed with car content or whatever your content, if you're making camera content and family videos, split them up, do them into two different channels. One of them is going to grow better than the other one, and trying to focus on a topic is probably better for you than just posting whatever comes to mind. That's just the way it is, if you're trying to grow. If you don't care about that, keep on doing what you're doing. Not exactly like I'm coming from an, a place of expertise with 16.9k subscribers, but hey, whatever. I, I, I feel... I feel silly sometimes when I give people like YouTube advice because I'm not a big channel by any means. I just do it so much that I feel like I do have information to share. Whatever. <laughs> oh, I should probably duck out of here soon since I've been at this for about an hour and... Sorry folks, Sorry, we, folks. Have we have a hiccup, hiccup, hiccup there. Hey, we're, hey we're back. Okay. Sorry about Sorry that. Sorry about that. I, some reason, some reason my, my stream, my stream dropped just dropped out for no apparent, apparent reason. Let's see. Live chat. Live chat. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, you're back. Oh, you're back. With, oh. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Back, with back with an echo. echo. Can, uh, is there an echo now? Let me know in the chat. Um, apparently, I, I closed my streaming application and suddenly my camera audio started working. So you were hearing me through my lav mic and through the camera mic for no apparent reason. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I may not be big, but my production quality has grown a lot. Um, my videos from SEMA were amazing. Thank you so much. I, that's part of what I'm doing is since I don't have enough big enough shop space to do the projects I would like to do, since I don't have, I'm just trying to make the best quality content that I can. Um, you know, I've got a camera that produces excellent quality 4K video. Yeah. I got my Atomus recorder that I use that I got for SEMA and I love because it allows me to create even better quality stuff. Like I'm doing anything I can to differentiate by producing the best quality content that I can because it's, it's what I've got, you know, try and make a good quality looking good stuff. I think the stuff I produced when I first started looks terrible and sounds terrible. And I, the next thing I need to do personally, I think is upgrade my audio quality. I don't like the way this microphone sounds. It's a good option for stuff like this where I'm moving around a bunch or when I'm doing just like quick interviews at shops or something. I don't have to set up a full microphone setup, but I'm going to be setting up in the near future a, a legit microphone setup on like an arm and the whole boom setup like a Hollywood set might have. I'll be doing that sometime soon because I want to improve my audio quality next. All right, folks. Uh, any last minute questions? I'm going to wrap up here soon now that I had a hiccup already and I've been at this for over an hour, hour and a half at this point. So anybody got any questions, any last minute things you'd like to hear? 
I try to keep these shorter so if anybody actually wants to watch the live stream later, they can, but I always end up making them longer than I intended to. Anybody seen any good movies lately? Anything I should check out? I'm way behind on pop culture at the moment. I watched uh, the H.P. Lovecraft Nicolas Cage movie last night, uh, Color of Space, Color Out of Space. Uh, I like Lovecraft, aside from his casual racism, uh, but I like the stories. Um, so I enjoyed that. It didn't get good, uh, good critic reviews, but I enjoyed it. Joe, good luck on the computer. Thank you. Oh, ba ba ba. If anybody runs a Facebook page, they are so annoying. They constantly try to get you to advertise video or posts. Every time you post something, they're like, hey, this is getting really good engagement. You should, you should, you should advertise it. Pay us, pay us. And then I pay for posts and advertise them, and they don't do well. I don't get any better video views or anything like that. It's, it's totally not worth my time. Granted, I'm not spending hundreds or thousands of dollars, but I can't, so whatever. Ba ba ba. All right. Uh, yeah. Tim and Eric's billion dollar movie. I haven't heard of that one. Look it up. I down, or I, uh, I checked out a couple things. What's what's on my list? Uh, there's a couple movies I want to see. I want to watch The Lighthouse. I want to watch. Yeah, I forget. Tim and Eric. Never heard of that. Came out in 2012. Had a budget of, or no a box office of two hundred thousand dollars. Ha! Not a billion dollar movie. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah. Is that some spam trying to advertise a, a game in here or something? Whatever. Um, yeah. All right, folks. I think it's going to wrap it up. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much to everybody for coming around. Thank you for the engagement, checking out and talking, hanging out, all that. Make sure to check out patreon.com slash hot rod hippie. That directly supports the hot rod hippie channel. Please. Like, share, and subscribe. Share. I never make a point about sharing. If you have any friends who you think might have any interest in my content, even if they just want to hear me ramble on, please share it with them. That can help. That can help with the growth. Uh, I appreciate it when folks do that. Oh, the lighthouse is filmed near you. Oh, oh okay. Just, uh, just checking. I'm, I never know with uh, people recommending things in chat whether or not it's spam, and I'm sorry I'm not familiar with you as a subscriber. Uh, yeah, so like, share, comment, subscribe. I have t-shirts, merchandise, teespring.com slash stores slash Hot Rod Hippie if you want to check that stuff out, or it's below this video in the uh, little widget that's on YouTube as well. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for coming around, hanging out with me, and checking things out. Have a good one.